Narity here, and I'm going to be doing a tutorial on removing objects and characters from scenes in Vegas. And some information before we start. I apologize for the staticky sound. I have been fiddling around with Cam Studio, this program I just downloaded today, um, and I can't seem to get rid of it, so I, I'm really sorry in advance. Um, I also apologize because it seems the longer the video runs, the more likely the audio will um, lag, um, the video will lag behind the audio. So I'm going to try and do this really quickly so that it doesn't get too long and that happens. So I'm sorry if I speed through things uh, too fast. Um, other than that, here are the programs I will be using. I will be using Vegas Pro 9 and I will be using Twisted Brush Pro Studio. I love this program. I definitely recommend it to anyone who's in, into artsy stuff and they like drawing and, and all that stuff because it's a really nice program. Uh, probably the only downside is that it's it was a program definitely designed uh, with tablet users in mind. I'm pretty sure you can still use it if you don't have a tablet. But yeah, there you go. Um, Twisted Brush Pro Studio. And okay, so back here. One last thing. This video assumes that the viewer is familiar with uh, masking. And that means, like, for example, you know what all these little things, these little doodads do. And you know all this stuff, and you know everything, basically, you know what these do. If you don't know how to do that, if you don't know anything about masking, there are a lot of lovely videos already on YouTube that you can look up. Um, I can't think of any off the top of my head, but I'm sure something um, will pop up if you go looking. With that out of the way, let's begin. Okay, so this is the scene we are going to be using, and some of you may recognize it from the previews I uh, uploaded just a little while ago. And this is what the scene looks like normally. As you can see, Nani is in the frame. Alright, what we want to do is take Nani out, because I want to mask Kenayana. See, I want to put him in. Here's the other one I want to use. I want him in, but I have to get Nani out first before I can do that. So, this technique I'm about to show you works best if the background is not moving, if the scene itself is not like the camera, I guess. If the camera isn't moving, it's not zooming in or out or panning left or right or anything like that. It, it, it's stationary. Um, you can still remove characters or things from a scene where the background is moving. I've done it before, but it, it's a little more complicated and I'm not going to get into detail about that in this video. We're just going to be dealing with backgrounds that don't move. Uh, I'm going to show you two types um, of ways to do this. The first one is easy, very easy. So what we have to do, as you can see in this scene, the camera is zooming in and up a little. So what we have to do is we have to wait until the camera stops moving. So around here. We also have to find a frame where Nani is not in the scenes. As you can see, she's creeping in here, as you can see her. So we, we go back, we scroll back until she's not in the frame. And there. So this is a suitable this is a suitable frame. What you do is click this save snapshot to file and you save it and you call it something. I've already saved it and I called it Nani Comet. So I'm going to drag it down here. And there we go. This is all I need. And the great thing about this is that I don't have to do any outside editing because the character's already out of the scene which is great. <laughs> so what we're going to do in order to remove her from the rest of the scene is we're going to mask her out. Mask. And let's see, where is it? I have to line this thing up with the orange. There we go. Right, so we're going to... Right, we're going to go here, add a keyframe. Go. So this is the first frame where she pops up we're going to do since this is she's in a controlled area in a very small confined area and nothing else gets in front or behind her we can just create a safe area where we think she might pop up and very quickly and that should be safe enough there you go and then we're going to set it to negative 
And that's our mask. And let's see, we're going to go all the way up until the very end here. So we're going to create a keyframe. And in the next frame, we're going to reset the mask so that there we go. So we only have this part where she's there. See, as you can see. Now, when you save snapshots, they usually get a little blurry. So I'm also going to I'm going to sharpen the image just a little so that it matches with the rest of the video. And there you go. She's completely out of the scene there. Now we're going to mask her out of this scene, which is a little harder. In fact, actually, now that I think about it, this is one of the hardest uh, scenes I've ever done because the background is so complicated. So what we ha the general rule is find a frame where the character or object in question is taking up the least amount of space. And I saved that, and I'm actually going to save this one so that I can show you how show you some things in the other program. I'll just name it tutorial and save to the desktop. Now we're going to go into Twisted Brush here and we're going to import it. Tutorial. Now um, you don't necessarily need this particular program. You just basically need a program that can edit pictures. If you are using this program, I will tell you now which tools will be your best friends. You can find them in the... Where are you? In, oh, here we go. You can find them in the Blender ca category. And your best friends will be the Raked, blend, dang it, the Raked Blender, the Basic Blender, and the Dirty Blender. Oh my gosh, the Dirty Blender, I swear, you'll use it more than anything else. And when you edit things, you want to do very smooth strokes. If you do something really messy, you'll end up, see, it doesn't look really nice. So you'll definitely want to keep to... Uh, smooth strokes and you'll go through and see basically what the the um, dirty blender is it drags the color that you start on into whatever area you drag it into so if I started in the black and dragged it it would drag the black and yeah you just keep on going that and you drag in colors note that this may all seem like one color but as you can see this part is darker than here so you have to kind of do this and this is where we we use things like the basic blender you do this to kind of even it out or the raked blender if you want some some texture and so basically what you do is you edit her out i have i have already that i'm not going to do the whole thing because obviously that would be boring and you guys would click the exit button <laughs> so this is what i did i did um here i'll show it to you dang okay there we go this, this is what happened. I smoothed the rug out, I did the wall here and dealt with the shadow. The easel was the hardest thing to do. I ended up having to cut some of Lilo's head out because otherwise she would have bled through the mask. So this is the finished product. And I put that, I put both these pictures underneath the scene. And now we're going to mask her out. So I'm going to do one frame really quickly just to show you. It's going to be really sloppy, but that's okay. Ta-da! And set it to negative. And there we go. See? She's out of the picture. Kind of. And I'm going to go scroll over here and show you what the finished mask kind of looks like. As you can see, we've gone through, I preserved Lilo, as you can see, and I've masked Nani out entirely. Ta-da! So we've gone through and we've done that. <coughs> and yeah, that's pretty much it. That is not the window I need. Black and white. There you go. This is the area where Nani used to be. What you're basically doing is creating a hole and you're going to through that hole, show the background. That's the basic idea of this technique. Yeah, I think that's about it. Until next time, nerdy tuning out.